Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Cruz. This is Bryce Vine. This is Dexter from The this Offspring. Is Nathan this East. is Sebastian Younger. This is Daryl Amy. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. This is Dr. Bob Greenberg. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. <laughs> this is Joe Litvak, and you're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Joe Litvak is part engineering nerd, part artist, part inventor, and founder of Blackbird Guitars, where he makes guitars out of linen and, and resin uh, into a material called Ecoa. And we want to talk about how in the fuck. Yeah. And there's also the company Lindgrove. So you have twin companies, but they both specialize in this flax based linen. I, I'm losing my words because I can't. Yeah, there are a lot of words for sure. This is, um, you know, the esoteric world of materials. Here. Yeah. Usually it's, you know, easy to start out just saying, how did we get started? What's the origin of this story, as they say up here in uh, Silicon Valley? What's the origin, <laughs> your origin story? story. What's your Tell me your story. origin story. How about just yeah. the story? Uh, so we started making guitars to travel. And that was the, the area we were focused on back in 2006 to do to make a good travel guitar and really simply put travel guitars at, the, at that point were smaller guitars take a normal guitar miniaturize it they sounded like garbage Crap. they're yeah. like two by fours with strings on them and but you could amplify the sweet mess out of them and, and help it out a little bit however you get an impurity of sound when you just try to shrink what we've you know the the natural body of a guitar when it's designed to resonate is one thing, and then when you try to shrink it so you can take it on a plane, that does a lot of backpack. You're not going to carry an amp, too, right? You're yeah. just yeah. If, you know, there's acoustic and electric. They're two different worlds in music. In, right. in music products, it's amazing. Like acoustic guitar companies never do well making electric guitars, and right. vice versa. And vice versa. Yeah. And it's been like they've had 150 years in order to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So they can obviously, but they're two different worlds as far as the market too. Um, so we we're definitely firmly in the go anywhere. Mars mm -hmm. to relate to, a, <laughs> you know, Elon Musk or whatever, to go yeah. to Mars or to go backpacking or to go traveling where you don't want to think about plugging in. You just want the acoustic experience. Mm -hmm. And you're right. When you shrink it down, it basically turns it into a different instrument. You lose the bass response. You lose the volume and the dynamics. You're making something that's like not similar to the human voice. And a guitar can really get a lot of the range of a human voice. Mm. So it's great for accompaniment. You get that bass, you get the treble, but guitars just kept being bigger and bigger and bigger until amplification was invented, mm -hmm. right? In the like, whatever, early 20th century. Yeah. And at the point, you know, sort of they got big enough to be able to entertain people at the jute joints, etc. They became dreadnoughts and they're so big that most people don't fit around a dreadnought really well. So instead of figuring out a way to make more sound of a smaller body, they just made a bigger guitar. So we went back to the drawing board, say, okay, how do we shrink a guitar into travel size again? They used to be smaller. Maybe we can learn from the ancients, so to speak, yeah. and add some new tech. And so... So before yeah. we talk about that, you took us around the factory and we went for a tour with you. And you were total material nerd. I mean, your mission started with making a guitar, but you wouldn't know that in the midst of that tour, except that it was about guitars because of your depth of knowledge about the composition of the material. And it, f it forced you to, it forced you to get that, get there, didn't it? Yeah. This became a material story pretty early on. So I, you know, I started at Ferrari in materials. And so I learned about composites, not like I was designing the, re the F1 cars, but just exposed to that material and that construction. They're using carbon fiber. Mm-hmm. And so our first breakthrough was, well, how do we make a smaller guitar that has a bigger voice? Well, why don't we use every last inch of it? So we made the neck hollow and designed the body in one piece, just like an F1 car is designed. It's not separate pieces. And so the whole instrument resonates together in unison and it makes a, lo a louder instrument. Well, there are not a lot of materials you can make a hollow neck with. Right. And It'll so stand up to the can't handle the you can't dug out a canoe version of wood and expect it to hold up. Right. Yeah. So our mini guitar was made out of carbon so the neck could be rigid enough. Mm -hmm. And 
it was great that it was stable because carbon can go anywhere and doesn't get affected by temperature, humidity, right. and the stuff that wrecks wooden guitars. A lot of acoustic guitarists have had a guitar implode on them. Wow. Because the nicer the guitar, the lighter build is, the easier it is to break. And the more go, frail. Yeah. Yeah, go from here 50 miles east and the weather changes. Yeah. And the... the you know, it just cracks. It's like, yeah. what a nightmare, you know? You have to actually turn your guitar case into a humidor, depending, a humidor, <laughs> yep. depending on where you're at. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's a good place to store your cigars anyway. Uh-huh. A lot of our <laughs> listeners who aren't guitar players are not maybe going to think of the fact that when you put six strings on something and then tension those six strings, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on that neck. And that neck really does have to stand up. It's not just that it's standing up to a guy who's going to run across the stage, you know, like Angus and, and whip the guitar around or anything like that. The constant strain of that instrument is from the fact that there are strings under pressure that, you know, that create a a strain on that guitar. So the fact that you're hollowing out the neck, uh, I want to call back to an episode that we did with Dr. Bob Greenberg, where he talked about Beethoven composing for piano and he was composing using notes and chords that didn't exist on the harpsichord because he knew that someday we were going to invent something that had the capacity to have all that all those voices and so he wrote for it anyway even though it didn't exist at the time so do you see the instrument that you've created maybe going in a direction where we create new stringed instruments because we have new capabilities well, I'd like to think we've gotten somewhere along that way already because we've created a professional travel guitar, first and foremost. That's what we first solved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's expanding the context where people can play uh, like a, a musical instrument, let's say a, an acoustic guitar that has that full range. And that makes a huge difference because then they actually bring it with them. It creates connections culturally. Uh, I have amazing stories of people going anywhere you can imagine. You know, we had five instruments in Antarctica at the same time. Wow. And um, cultural exchange going to, you know, somewhere in South Asia on the border of Burma and et cetera. And reaching out to people uh, in, in a musical level, even if they can't communicate. Right. And um, so, because yeah. any player of a stringed instrument is going to hear a Blackbird guitar and go, what's going on here? Yes, or look at it even. At back in the day, it was so unique looking with a carbon shape and the lute S. So we, we really changed the design yeah. to make it sound better. Right. And so we got rid of all of tradition and said, we're not worried about the shape being traditional. We're not worried about the material or even how we use it. One piece design. Right. Change everything with the sole purpose of making a better sounding small body instrument. That was kind of a new idea. There's more that can be done. We're just scratching the surface, like you were saying. Amazing. I think the other thing relating to kind of everyone is most people have tried to play an acoustic guitar. Uh-huh. Even if they're not like, I'm going to learn to play it, I've just picked it up and strummed it. And one of the, the takeaways often of the, the flat top acoustic and American steel string guitar is it's usually really hard to play. And the reason is because it's made out of wood. And unless you get like a new guitar or a really high quality, recently set up guitar, the strings are moving further and further away from the neck every month that passes yeah. <laughs> because the wood is changing. Yeah. And so what we're endeavoring to do is have a new relationship with the music, with an acoustic instrument where you don't have to worry about it moving and don't worry about it getting harder and harder to play. We shouldn't have to bleed to play guitar. And I, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people would be playing guitar today if they were playing, if they started out on a very easy to play instrument, absolutely, like no I bleeding. You know? Telecaster and I have a very nice, like mid range, but like nice uh, dreadnought from Martin. And that Martin, when you go to play lower on the fretboard, it's it's prohibitive, right? You know, my guitar is old enough; it's been to the desert, it's been here. But my Telecaster, it's always just a little tap, tap, tap. It's so much more fun to play. Yep. If I want to get tired and have my fingers ache, then I play the acoustic. Right. Totally and who true. wants that? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't play it very much that's because of thing. that. Yeah. And the travel between the uh, weather environments has taken a lot of the life out of that guitar. Yep. So it's amazingly refreshing that you are such a guitar purist and you really have the sincere uh, concern for the instrument and the players of the instrument. And then you approach the material, um, much like Ferrari and the traditions there. But I want our listeners to really understand just how much of a guitar nerd you are. So when we first got here, you talked about spruce. 
Uh, tell us why spruce is so important. Yeah, so backing up real quick. So when we jumped into this tribal guitar problem initially 10 years ago, made the rider guitar, we chose carbon fiber for the reasons I mentioned. Make it stiff enough to make a one-piece hollow neck design. Mm -hmm. And we made the soundboards carbon fiber because we wanted it to be stable. Other than carbon, the only other material that people use is wood. And not just any wood, but old growth wood. And that goes for, that goes for the neck for the body and for the soundboard. Right. And, um, and not just old growth wood, but I'm going to take it even further. Old growth rainforest wood. Like, could you find a, a worse material to be cutting down? No. Right. And that's not even, it's not about ideology. There's almost none of it left. A more scarce material. Yeah, it's, it's scarce. Down. Exactly. So there's, there's actually a huge need in the music industry for something for the future generations. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're lacking that. Now, why old growth wood? Back to your question. So spruce is used for the soundboard or the top mm -hmm. where the strings get attached. And it's essentially like the skin on a drum head or the drum head on a, on a, on a hand drum. It's like that skin. Most of the sound comes out of that soundboard. That's how a guitar works. That top has to be very light and it has to pump air and it produces the sound of a guitar. So um, that's you know, the part that sings. That's. 95% of the, of the resonance of the amplification comes from the soundboard. Mm -hmm. And it has these very specific properties. It has to be certain thickness. It can't be, um, you know, it has to be very, very light. Like it's almost featherless when you lift it up. And it has to be rigid enough to hold that bridge down and keep those strings on the top without doing what we were talking about, lifting up those strings and making the guitar hard to play. Right. So as you'd said earlier, it's really a lot of tension it's a lot of mechanical requirements turns out that spruce is pretty much the best for that there are a few other old growth trees also that because work. of how slowly the spruce tree grows and how close together the grain is and, yep. and how dense of a wood it is it can handle that kind of pressure it's and still be very thin yeah i mean i simplify it by saying look at you know the really tall trees we have here in california the redwoods or the sequoia yeah these are also tall trees they're 500 year old trees they grow hundreds of feet and it's that stiffness to weight ratio that lets them grow so tall mm -hmm. that's the same thing that we're using to make the sound you know we're using that same stiffness to weight aspect to make a good soundboard um and yeah by all accounts 90 percent of that material is gone so what what we've from done the earth from the earth so and the other 10 percent that remains a has to be hunted down and b when you hunt it down you find out it's in the rainforest right it's good part luck. yeah there's a 50 billion dollar poached wood market annually wow. uh, estimated that right. that the part That's of that, the other is that you have to gotta get a permit or you got to poach it basically right. Yeah. right exactly and it's hard to know the difference it's like ivory it's actually protected a lot of these trees are protected under the same protect international protection as ivory so given this problem of supply chain and given the fact that that carbon is really great but not as light as spruce we found a need and said we need to develop something that looks like wood that feels like wood Sings and like wood. Sings like wood. There you go. I'll just coin that right now. <laughs> and I'm getting really into it because, yeah, that's a big part of our stories. We've, we've made a material that's actually lighter for the same stiffness as spruce. Wow. And we call it ECOA. And so what you saw downstairs in the materials nerd thing you're relating to is just taking the benchmark of old growth spruce, mm -hmm. saying, how do we make it better than that? And better means a better sounding instrument. Better means also a better material. Yeah. Right. Um, back in the day, we used to have lots of old growth wood. We built houses out of it. We built even planes. We certainly built a lot of nice instruments that are the most sought after acoustic guitars today, yeah, 100 right. years later. And not having access to that kind of quality of material means necessarily worse quality instruments. Worse quality instruments or somebody's got to blaze the trail with a new material. Right. And here we are. Here we are. Yeah. So... Now, we're answering the questions of creating an instrument that is more functional, that's more long-lasting, that's more playable, uh, encourages the artistry and by taking away limitations, and it's, uh, and, it's, and it's answering the question of being a better sounding material as well. So what's the response in the marketplace been uh been like and where have your guitars gone because we know that you're you're bridging gaps now and and musicians who are out there 
are able to communicate with these with these instruments in like you said places where people don't speak the language but they see the instrument and i'm looking at the, the top of mount everest right now and there's a guitar up there <laughs> that's the, so one of your guitars went to the top of mount everest yeah actually uh, that is so that's the that original rider model that i was talking about yeah. that was our travel guitar well fucking leo fender can't say that yeah right no kidding and um God and that was actually one of the fender. first anyway. <laughs> first ones we made oh yeah yeah so i uh, sold it to a to a, a traveling actually young young person songwriter and um and so i was like okay cool proof of concept you know music industry is a bit of a tough a yeah. tough game yeah sure. so you know having that kind of confirmation um and now you know hundreds of times over so we've we've made several thousand instruments now uh -huh. we produce everything right here in san francisco in, in house so we kind of had to own everything every part of it because it's so different that yeah. we can't just say oh could you do this or can we use that neck from that no we, nope. we have to make everything from the molds all the way to the material what is that what that's afforded is we've had really good control mm. uh, of, of the whole aspect how we release the information or whatever and initially we decided to make a ukulele because ukuleles are smaller yeah mm -hmm. And you a little know, easier to prototype. Yeah, when you screw up, you're screwing up something smaller, less material. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and for you exactly, can learn some lessons there. Prototyping 100 percent of the way. You yeah. know, you know. Imagine every prototype has to be big. Well, I made that mistake later, so. <laughs> um, so we Goodness. we were smart at that point. Started with that that uh, Clara ukulele. We're going to start by building a double bass. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why don't we just we can make it a rideable instrument. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so uh, Clara, Clara was our first instrument we released in 2013 with ECOA. So we've had a, several years now on the market. And that's a concert. It's small. fits in a backpack, tiny. We uh, got more um, success on that instrument than, than any from the f previous five years of operations. Mm. So that was very much like, a, okay, well, now it's time for us to transition from carbon to ECOA. And it took us the last five years to make that transition, made another kind of different ukulele and then now a couple guitars and we're just focused on um, keeping up with orders um, so one one thing in the ukulele world that's really cool is being able to sell instruments back to hawaii what i joke wow. about export and, yeah. our, and that's where most of our instruments go yeah so they're compared with the high-end hawaiian made ukuleles you know ukuleles like we started as a travel guitar company ultimate travel guitars yeah. ukulele. that's one of my sure. jokes and so being able to send them over there and getting appreciation from that culture that you know was the genesis of that instrument that is a justification for sure yeah jake sumikoro has one of our instruments wow um, lots of pros play the instrument because it's so great for gigging what's what yeah. about so you know they have the uh, the alternate material and the modern violins that Engineering wise, when you measure it, sound great as good, if not better, than you know the Stradivari era violins. But there's a ton of pushback from the concert violinists, like they don't sound as good because you know it's not a quarter million dollars to buy the thing. Are you seeing similar pushback at all from anybody? Is there like a class, like once you get to like the concert level, people are just they're not going to believe it yet, or? Well, yeah, I just decided to raise my price to, to like two hundred thou, and then, <laughs> then people are all there over you go. it. Right? Yeah, boom. Uh, boom, McLaren, what's up? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, you know, pushback. We had a lot more pushback in the carbon era mm -hmm. because you look at carbon fiber; it's black, sure, it's woven. Gear, you know, gearheads and you know racer types, they love that. They stuff. dig it. Yeah, I can't get enough. You know, bikers even. But that aesthetic does not translate to, you know, one of America's traditional objects, which, you know, we invented the steel string acoustic guitar. Yeah. So here, we don't like things that are very different mm -hmm. as it comes to, like, that tradition. Yeah. Um, it's going to take time. It just, I mean, it, we're making similar instruments to 100 years ago. I mean, it, we're, like, going backwards in a lot of ways mm. when it comes to acoustic guitars. Can we use that old hide glue, which is made from animal? Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, that's, that stuff's going on in the industry because they want that sound. I need to smell the whale fat. Yes, the <laughs> whale fat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's actual thing. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, that's, render render yeah. it. With ECOA, right, we've got, you know, we've got a, a, a better object because of a better material. Mm -hmm. Very much like the original guitars were made with a better wood. Right. And so that's what makes them a better guitar. Yeah. And, um, you know, pushback as to sort of go back to that original question has been pretty uh, minimal since we moved to the ECOA material because it looks 
similar. Right. It's using flax linen. Yeah. Right? So it looks, it, it feels, it's organic. It's yep. a gorgeous guitar. Thank it you. really is. And, you know, it is beautiful. Car- carpenters look at it and be like, what kind of wood is that? You know? Yeah. And it's made from, a, from natural fiber. So it's essentially like we took the components of wood, mm-hmm. fiber and resin, and made a better fiber using flax and a better resin using bio-based materials, put that together, and we have a better wood. It's like simple as that, you know. That Took is a, a beautiful longer. way to explain that yeah. because it really brings things into clear focus. You have the purity of the mission, which was to create a guitar that would lessen limitation. And then you have the uh, purity of method because you've essentially synthesized wood for all the right reasons. Terrific. Highest grade wood. Wood yeah. that's hard to get and protected. Mm-hmm. And you're, you've allowed that wood to remain protected. And then, yeah, done. you say that like the product is carbon neutral or carbon I negative. Said part conservationist in the beginning. But I mean, yeah, that is nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> conservationist nerd activist. But but that is a big piece. It's one of the reasons why I want to talk to you because you are there are people like you that are looking at these things like, okay, the, the world's heating up. Believe it, don't believe it, whatever. But there's we can do a better job being stewards, whatever you believe. And here you are using. What I see, like, largely is, is, like, a very simple base product. And a lot of times, from what I understood from the Pop in the Bubble episode, like a waste product in a lot of times where this is something that's just going to get turned into biomass and put back in the field to re-enrich a soil or something, right? Exactly, yeah. So we're, we're marching towards closed loop. So okay. that means, um, you know, getting the, the fiber from either a virgin or a recycled source. Today, we're using CO2 negative linen fibers. What does that mean? So that means in the whole process from the genesis of the plant, from the planting, let me put it in simple terms, from planting the frickin' seed mm-hmm. all the way to the final fiber, the whole process is CO2 negative. I mean, just so... Because your f- photosynthesis, you're actually, um, through that photosynthesis process, the plant is you're sequestering carbon. Mm-hmm. So our big mission that's gone from, hey, we can make a better spruce to like, well, other people are interested in this. Why does that matter? We should probably start thinking about reducing our impact as a species, according to everyone's assessment at this point. And how do we do that? Well, one, one way to do that is to grow our structures from fast-growing plants, from vegetables, essentially. Yeah. And so instead of extracting high-energy materials like metals and concrete and cutting down trees, which are really good sequestration of CO2 and a big problem when it comes to you know, global carbon emissions, we use fast growing plants, which will actually reduce our global warming potential as they, as they call it. That's, it's a mouthful, but reducing the global warming potential of the materials you use is one of the big ways that uh, as a species, we can start counteracting carbon emissions. So I want to unlock some more of this for the audience because I'm so passionate about what you do. And one of the reasons why I was pushing to have you on the show, but Yes, guitars. Yes, ukuleles. Maybe double bass at some point, but also like the Lingrove that side. <laughs> never mind the double bass. The Lingrove side, though, you're looking at using the material to to allow other entrepreneurs to create a linen based, flax based material. Then, yeah. So, so yeah. Thanks for the soft pitch. So, um, so the Blackbird story continues on today, uh-huh. and at a certain point, we got so much interest from designers and manufacturers. Yeah. In, in the material, once we launched that ukulele uh, and then the guitar, and they said, well, what is this ECOA stuff that you call ECOA? It's linen and resin. How do we use it? Could it work for our application? And so we launched Lingrove in response to that. And Lingrove is a, is a materials developer, distributor, uh, separate team also based here in, in, in the Bay Area, producing materials and distributing them and getting them into the market. And so that's all to say that we're the first to actually know how to make quality product and we're taking that knowledge and bringing it to bear on on stuff like furniture like you you guys sat in the chair downstairs yeah. so that that's a big market for us where a lot of wood is used today in fact ikea uses one percent of the world's wood so to give you an idea like those are big impact areas um, in auto uh, it would be replacing some of the carved wood that people use but also some of the other energy embodied materials and just standard plastics which are starting to also be an issue for a lot of people. They're realizing that plastics can be just something we want to sort of reduce as well. 
Um, and then today you can buy arrows and fishing rods and paddles and other sports equipment where we're replacing carbon fiber and materials like that and going back to that wood-like aesthetic that exists already in sports. Two, yeah. two questions. One is, uh, is Lynn Grove kind of you guys' Las Vegas weekend baby? Were you like, oops, look at this awesome thing? Like, or was that kind of a design like, we think we're going to start with guitars and then branch off? And then the other question is, is will we see an eco of Formula One car? Wow. Um, that was like a third, like the third question. It's like a big one. Let um, me try to sort this out for you. Yeah. Number one, Pete said, wow, look at this thing about his Las Vegas weekend, baby. Uh, <laughs> number two, I think if I can answer that last question, we should probably, before we see an entire Formula One car, we should at least see well-appointed interiors that are largely ECOA. Right. Yes. So I think that's a good guess. Um, so stepping back. So I'm a product designer by trade, right? So that's what I, that's how I, I approach this stuff. Materials are an end to get to a solution, right? Pick the right material for the job. Yeah. That's how it goes. Anytime you don't, you're compromising the process, so to speak. So, um, it just so happens that, that musical instruments have a need for some of the highest performing materials ever, right? Hence carbon fiber yeah. not even being good enough for musical instruments, right? So taken through that lens, like I love other problems in other fields. And so it wasn't exactly a Las Vegas baby. It was more like, well, look, look what we found. It looks like we made something that's better than spruce. I'm guessing that's going to have a lot of other applications okay. trying to be cognizant. So we launched Lingrove right about exactly the same time as we launched the ukulele okay. with the idea that it was going to be, you know, Sure, we got some initial press and that, that turned it on, but just the idea that it was going to make some waves. So and to use the Las Vegas baby simile, yeah. hey, look, we genetically engineered a superior athlete. Let's teach him how to ride a bike. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to parse that out later. Yeah, that's, uh, that's something to chew on. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's like, yeah, that was, we can leave you on that note. Um, and then... Uh, as far as applying to stuff like very relatable, right? Transportation. So big movement in, in the trans world, that's what it's called. Transportation world is lightweighting. Sure. All these battery powered cars are much heavier than yeah. standard cars. In general, our cars are getting heavier as well known. Mm -hmm. In the U.S. here, of course, everything's trucked around and, and trucking shipping costs are going up. Transportation is one of the biggest issues as everyone knows in in global warming as well and so there's a lot of regulation and a lot of in industry pressure to reduce mass well composites are the way to do that and we have a composite that's lighter than carbon and so big application for that that we found that that's solving pain points is for auto and for those folks every ounce counts they want to take the thousands of parts that goes in every car and reduce a bit from all of them and so the obvious fit is interiors today because that's an easier pathway. Right. Um, but you know, I would love someday to have a whole, in, you know, a whole vehicle made out of out of this material. F one may be a bit of a stretch. Uh, give me a few years for the. But F1 they've got car. the budget and the and the R and D. I mean, that's why you see carbon fiber on cars now because yep. of starting there. What about something like I live down by the port of Long Beach, and it's shipping containers and big rigs everywhere if you could change 10 percent of that weight by being the platform you know or like the structure that holds the container the container itself all of that stuff is it yeah the skin or the floor or the right or like just like the the erector set thing that goes underneath the uh the container so the containers ecoa and then the the trailer part of the truck was ecoa is it cost prohibitive to designs because you guys hand make the guitars. I mean, in terms of like placing all the pieces, but could you vacuum? Yeah, form? mass produce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what what we do on the uh, you know Blackbird does on the guitar side is is much more of a craft aerospace approach. Mm -hmm. What Auto uses is mass production, right? And um, and so a lot of the orientation of what we're doing at Lingrove is fitting the product to mass production. Okay. Mm. That's how we grow usage. That's the philosophical difference between the two companies. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, one is Lingrove is fa is, is like a hundred percent focused on scaling up usage of natural fibers in lieu of 
worse materials, mm -hmm. worse for the user because it's heavier and not as durable and worse for the environment. And so we initially, we just need to get like the customer to want to buy the thing. Mm -hmm. And so luckily our material looks like really nice wood because yeah. that's what everyone wants mm -hmm. still. And so our dream is at the end of the day, no matter what you're purchasing, you see the name Ecoa and you know that you have a really durable product, like the most durable material pretty much for most applications, really high performance material. And, and, and it's beautiful. And you look at it and you just have the lizard response. You don't even have time to think if it's beautiful. You want it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's it is. You could appoint a uh, Rolls Royce with this episode of the Break It Down show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate and develop podcasts just like this one. Consult others to build their own and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at Pete A. Turner. Or at John LG69. At the Break It Down show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. And that's, you know, that's... It like, is. You could appoint a uh, Rolls Royce with, with Ecoa. And no, it would no not comment. be out of, <laughs> out of place. Yeah. I know that's not the first brand name that we talked about. but And you may be loyal to the other, but that's the... Uh, that's the reality of the aesthetic is that it, it does create the lizard response. And that's, you know... There are lots of people that come around with some nice brown looking plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that has a couple problems. One, it's brown looking plastic. Yeah. It turns out not a lot of people want to buy brown looking plastic. Yep. The other thing is that this is not plastic. The fibers are 10 times stronger than any plastic. And so plastic sucks because plastic is weak a lot of the times and just doesn't last long. Everyone's had plastic crap that just breaks on them. The whole idea of using these long fiber composites is they're in that different class of a durable material that mm. you get out of from metal you get from other composites and you get from quality wood. Uh, and I think more and more stuff needs to be made out of these materials. So they last longer. They give you a better experience, but that's getting me into my product guy. Yeah. Hat. The other nerd uh, materials, <laughs> guitar product guy, nerd, I think environmentalist yeah. nerd. We yeah. have conservation, conservation nerd, yeah. sure. conservation nerd. That's a nice song. Just one word. What nerd buttons have we not pushed? Uh, it's so many nerd buttons. I think buttons. we should just push the Omna nerd button. Yeah. And just say you're all nerd. Yeah, That's that would, true. That would make it easier. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell my wife. Poly nerd? Poly nerd. Poly. Maybe, no, let's not give you all of them. How about just poly math? That just turn into a to compliment. How come it's not a poly insult? English? <laughs> there hasn't been a poly math since Thomas Jefferson. And but, now right. we're in the presence of greatness. I want to be respectful of time because it's 204. I, I just want to say this. I want to work here. I don't care what you make me do, and, and I don't even want any money. Because he wants some money. I do want some money. Let him say no, that. The, the, <laughs> the thing is, every day, I feel like every day that this operation exists, musicians are enriched, and the earth gets to go, thank God. So whatever it is you're doing here, we need to spread it. Are you going to play that guitar for us? Well, I mean, I have to do my part, right? Yeah, you got to do your part. Okay, let's see if I, I'm going to mic it with yeah. the, the lav here. Joe Litvak, everybody.